What? <laughs> Gotta make sure the juice here. Mm hmm. Before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, review a little candy. Candy, candy. I already opened the bag. Hot shoes, highly demanded. Now, I tried these before, but oh my gosh, y'all were right. The green apple and grape are my favorite. <gasps> That was the last green apple. Mm. They are so good, so juicy, so chewy. Yes, ma'am. Now, when you first eat these, they kind of taste like gum, but mm, hold on. They call them high chews for a reason, that's for sure. Hold on. So, if you don't know what we're doing from the title of the video, we are going to be doing <laughs> lips. And oil pastels, of course. Now, just for a disclaimer, this is gonna be, like I said, my way of doing it. So just to FYI, we're gonna be doing three versions of lips in three different, somewhat different styles. I'm gonna go ahead and stop rambling. We're gonna go ahead and get onto the video. I hope you guys enjoy. Get a snack or a high chew. Mm. Get out your paper, your oil pastels. Let's hit the road, Jack. Ugh. Well, hello, hello, kind fellow. Are y'all ready to draw some lists with me or whatever? So I'm drawing on 300 series drawing paper, Strathmore. I'm gonna be using uh, Crayola oil pastels and Moongayo. To the right, you can actually see my beautiful reference photo for the set of lips. And this set of lips is going to be the abstract. So we're gonna go all colorful. As you can see, what I'm doing right now is kind of building the whole shape of the lips and then I'm adding my values. So what I'm doing is is I'm getting my blocks in. I'm not going into too much detail and I'm doing all my darks and lights. So you can see that I'm double layering the red and the blue because I want it to be very uh, contrasty. So then you fill in pretty much all your values and I'm using this pink tone. As you can see in the reference photo, that's kind of what it was. And then maybe a little bit of yellow on top. So I'm actually using a Crayola as a base here and then I'm gonna be putting Moongayo over it because Moongayo is a lot more uh, opaque. So I wanna make sure that they are very full and uh, juicy lips. Like I said, this is gonna be the abstract. So really you just need to find out what colors you want um, your values to be. So whether you want them blue, red, pink, yellow, orange, do whatever you want. Like I said, I'm kind of doing it my way in the beginning and then I'm gonna be adding those really, really opaque colors over it to make it kind of pop. Now, of course, with abstract, you're using that reference photo very loosely. At least that's what I do. Um, I don't wanna go too realistic. I don't wanna do all that, you know, blending too much, but I do end up doing some blending here with my finger so I can make sure everything is filled in and all Gucci. Now, this is when I go into some uh, different kind of colors. I go in with some more yellows. I wanted a warm things up a bit instead of making them look really cool and washed out um, there you can see me adding some more highlight because like I said I want them to be juicy and shiny like she just put on some uh, chapstick whatever now don't get me wrong the outside of the lips are very important but I'm not going into too much detail I ended up making it look very uh, Van Gogh-y you know like I wanted to make the lines very expressive um, and one thing that I will say to make a lip look really juicy and really voluptuous um the underneath the lip the, i don't know what that's called but you know what i mean make it darker so that bottom lip really does protrude and make it look juicy and of course that little cupid's bow kind of ties everything together like i said i didn't go into too much detail with this but do whatever you want however you're feeling the rest of the piece is vibing with also be careful um with the edges of the lip because you can make someone look really old with the creases and onto the realistic looking lips, probably what y'all are waiting for. Now, I am no, I am no pro. I'm no pro. This was actually a little difficult because I've not done realistic looking lips in a long time with oil pastels, a long time. So I went ahead and took some oil pastel, the Crayola. They are very dry, so they are harder to blend with your finger. But for me, that's actually a good thing because I don't want to go into too much um, color at this point because I want to make sure I have everything lined out and marked out. Um, so like the other set of lips, I went ahead and just kind of blocked everything out, made sure I knew where my values were, and I wanted to go ahead and be a little bit more careful with this one because I wanted to save those shine spots as much as possible. Now, don't get me wrong. I love a good detailed lip, especially in art, but sometimes you just don't need it. The less, the better sometimes. Right here, you can see me kind of uh, adding some different colors, adding some cool colors for the shadows underneath the lip. Now, underneath the lip was a very 
disgusting place throughout this whole like drawing i don't know why it would just cause me so much harm mentally um but like the other drawing you can see i'm kind of adding some layers making sure i have those dark spots to make everything kind of a little bit more cohesive and also very uh contrasty so you know where the shine and you know where the dark is and that's maybe one of the reasons why i don't do a lot of realism especially with oil pastels because you do have to use your finger a lot um and there's less building layers and more just blending and blending and blending um, now with this set of lips like I said I do a lot of blending with my finger and it really does come in handy these Crayola because they are so hard so you have a little bit more control over them um, if you're using a really soft oil pastel you're gonna have to do a lot more blending with your finger as always to each their own however I do choose to not do the realistic route of course uh, but that doesn't say I can't do it now don't judge me these are not gonna be perfectly realistic um, there are some factors that keep you from doing completely realistic especially with oil pastels so don't get down in the dumps when you can't make something look photorealistic with oil pastels because it is really really hard uh, so as you can see here I went ahead and colored around the lips just a little bit to make it more uh, you know flesh color um, and then I went ahead and add some more depth and right now I'm using the moon guy which is like I said very opaque so it's adding that juiciness that I really want at this point point. and you can achieve this same exact look with just Crayola so don't you worry I am just showing you that you can use two different um, oil pastels with each other now of course the softer one on top and then the harder one on the bottom but you can use this with just Crayola I've done it before it is hundred percent possible I will say you might have to layer it just a little bit more with Crayola but nonetheless it will give you a great outcome now right now you can still see me kind of going into detail but those will simply be washed away later on because I will add more and more layers on top now that's one thing with realism too is you slowly be making mistakes especially with me so don't take this as gospel but I am making mistakes that's how you learn um, but as you can see I'm still kind of blocking out my uh, my shadows um, especially with the bottom lip that's actually really juicy I like that little bottom lip now one thing about value if you're still not understanding it because listen I'm no teacher I don't really know how to explain it that well but um, I, naturally when I draw all the time I squint my eyes like crazy my eyes when I draw are probably squinted about 70% of the time it's so funny I used to get made fun of a lot but what I didn't realize what I was doing is I'm pretty much finding the values when I squint. So I'm, I'm trying to block out all the detail because that's what your eyes want to see. Your eyes want to see the detail. You want to go straight to the detail because I wanted to for the longest time. But when you squint, you kind of see everything in a different light. Everything's blurry. So you see shapes a little bit differently. At this point in the drawing, I'm still just using my shapes, just blocking everything out. You can actually see me uh, doing these lines um, in the upper lip here in a second. Those are pretty much just to add like that lightness that's in there as well it's not just dark so I'm gonna go ahead and blend everything out you're gonna be blending a lot with your finger uh, so I, if you don't like that go ahead and get a little q-tip because I know those can help as well especially with oil pastel um, but like I said just look at your drawing don't go into too much detail too quickly look at the colors if you want to mess around with the colors that's fine with you just make sure you're matching the value pretty well what you'll also notice, I go back and forth a lot. So I will lighten up an area and then I'll quickly darken it. That's just kind of the rule of thumb with art in general. You know how you go back and forth on some stuff. And right here, you can see me adding some cute little periwinkle uh, purple pinkish stuff. That really did kind of just brighten everything up. Like I said, you guys, it is not just, you know, brown tan. It is a whole bunch of different colors. It is a pink, blue. It is literally everything, especially when you see me doing that bottom or underneath the bottom lip. I don't know what that area is called, but you'll see that I use a lot of different colors. Um, you can see right now I'm adding some more highlight everywhere so I don't forget. And then I'm adding some blue and brown everywhere, especially in the darker areas. There we go with that bottom lip or underneath the bottom lip. Let me tell you, you'll see that change a lot throughout this drawing. I did not like the reference photo for some reason, so I went ahead and just did it my own way. 
I know, I get it. If you're looking back and you're like, oh my gosh, this mouth is going nowhere quick, you'd be correct because I was struggling. And like I said, this video is to show you like, I ain't perfect. I am just showing you, um, you know, a lot of people ask for a lip tutorial, so I wanted to show you three different ways. And unfortunately, I am not great at making really detailed lips, especially realistic. So like I said, I'm trying my best. I think this, these pair of lips alone took me about 45 minutes to an hour just on the lips themselves. Like they're big and juicy, but yeah, a long time. And don't get me started with that chin. Oh my gosh, I hated the reference photo. The, the light just didn't make too much sense. So I ended up making my own light and try to make it work. Um, it ended up looking pretty decent. So I ended up making a false chin and a false shadow. I know it probably doesn't make too much sense, but I think it looks better than the reference photo that I was using. So it's gonna look like trash right now for a hot second, but believe me, I'll sooner or later blend it in um, to make it look like that one W that's underneath everybody's chin, if you know what I mean. Right now you can see that I'm lightening all the areas around the mouth. I really wanted to pop, I wanted to make it look juicy. So doing that really does make it a little bit more bold. And like I said, these are very opaque. So you're gonna be using your fingers a lot if you're using these oil pastels. If they were Crayola, I would simply just be using like a neutral color to blend everything out. But since these don't blend well, they just layer really well. Um, I'm just gonna have to use my finger, unfortunately. At this point, I felt like I needed a little bit more detail and a little bit more uh, highlight, so I went ahead and went in with my white and did these little lines on the lip. You don't want to make it like a circle like I do in my like goofy abstract portraits. I wanted to make it look a little bit more realistic, a little bit more natural. Of course, these aren't 100% natural and 100% realistic, but I didn't want to do too cartoony, especially if I'm trying to show you how to do realism, lol. So I'm adding these lines everywhere. Um, I'm Like I said, I'm still kind of blocking everything in, but I am going into more detail this time especially with the upper lip because it was a little yellow in the reference photo of course I'm lightening that area underneath the bottom lip um, like I said I had some struggles but right now it kind of looked still kind of looked cute um, but it still needed some work definitely so I went ahead and blocked out the chin in white and kind of didn't restart but I kind of reshaped it once more and once more, I went ahead and reshaped that bottom uh, upper chin or whatever it's called. Um, like I said, I wanted to make it look like a W type thing and it wasn't really working. So of course I'm layering, kind of flaring that up, that shade up. And of course she's my finger. And I think it ended up working a little bit better. <laughs> And for the longest time, I actually didn't do this with my artwork. I did not, on the edges of the mouth, on the corners of the mouth, I didn't flare that shading up. So right now you can see I'm adding some darker colors around the edges of the mouth. That really kind of just adds an effect of depth and that they're actual lips instead of just like stickers. And now I'm just adding some detail on the bottom lip. Like I said, using those lines really does help because your lips aren't always perfectly smooth unless you always have some lip gloss on or lip fillers. Um, so you're gonna have to have those lines and you, when you try to make them look organic, they end up looking artificial anyway. So just make them however you wanna make them. There really is no right way because everybody's lips is different. But like I said, they're not super realistic, but you get it. Well, dang, I thought we were done. Anyways, I'm, I guess I'm adding some more contrast um, underneath that bottom lip. Uh, Y'all, please don't roast me. Half the time, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm really just practicing and showing you guys what I do. This is not the right way, the wrong way. This is just my way. Um, I still need a lot of practice, especially with realism. I did get a lot of DMs asking for a lip tutorial. So here it is. So I hope it, I really hope this did it justice for some of y'all. I am so sorry. This is not like step-by-step -step type stuff um, because in my opinion, lips are the least detailed amongst a lot of uh, portraits. Um, it's the nose and the eyes that really kind of engage you. It's the lips that are mainly the ones that are the least detailed, but they look the most detailed. So don't let your eye fool you. They aren't all that with a bag of Cheetos. At this point, I'm just kind of uh, fixing all these little smudges everywhere with some other neutral colors. And then I'm also adding just a little bit more details in areas and a little bit more darkness. Um, other than that, it's done. Yes, yes, yeah. Look at that. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, ma'am. 
Now it is time for what I like to call my kind of style, which is a mixture between, you know, semi-realistic and then very abstract. So this is what I like to do. Pretty much, I'm gonna go through it like I normally do. It's gonna be quick because you kind of get the spiel. Doing the same, uh, kind of blocking out your colors, but this is gonna be more cartoony, but the outer areas are going to be a little bit more realistic like the one we just did. Now, like I said, I like my lips really, really juicy. I want them a pop in. So I like to have those areas that are white, super white. I don't really like to touch them um, other than the normal color of the paper. Now, one thing you will realize with this set of lips is that the anatomy really does not make any sense. You'll see by the end, there's a lot of grooves and a lot of lines that really make absolutely no sense. But you know what? That's kind of how I make my mouth. It's kind of cute. Just want to mention again, all three pairs of lips are using the same reference photo, of course, different interpretations. And you'll see that even the shape of these lips are a little bit different. I made them a little bit more juicy or whatever. There will be no scratchy scratch. So if y'all waiting this whole time for some scratchy scratch, unfortunately, I did not use it in any of these lips, but you can kind of imagine where I would put them. I would kind of put them in the grooves in the lips and of course around the mouth. I didn't like how flat these were looking, so of course I went in with a darker color. And then I wanted to put another neutral color over that just to kind of blend it out again, especially on the lips. But overall, I like these pair of lips. That, like I said, this is what I usually do. Um, kind of, kind of semi-realistic, but also very abstract and juicy. Um, let me know what your favorite lips are out of these three. Damn, y'all watched that whole video. Thanks. <laughs> Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. If you guys have any questions or concerns, let me know in the comments below. Like I said, this is my kind of interpretation on different styles of doing lips in oil pastels. Now, I don't follow these all the time, but they're kind of my general rule of thumb. I'm not an art teacher, so I'm so sorry if I get anything wrong or if you can't understand what I'm saying. I'm not the smartest cherry in the uh, fruit vegetable tree. But I hope you guys learned something and I hope you guys had fun drawing with me. If you guys have a candy that I should go ahead and review on camera, let me know because I'm always up for that sweet tooth. Check out some of my other videos. They're kind of funny or whatever. Don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell so you know when I post because I'm a little random. I think that's it. I'm going to stop rambling before y'all um, unsubscribe. So I love y'all. Bye.